breaking news this morning. It took more than a year, but a man is finally behind bars for a violent home invasion. You're looking at video of this scene taken last November. Police say Jaquez Sinclair was one of three men who kicked down the door of a home on Standing Stone Court. After running tests on the bullets found in the home, police identified Sinclair as a suspect, and then the victim identified him from a photo lineup. The 20-year-old is charged with aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon. I-24 West is back open after an overnight rollover crash. This is a look at the scene from our TDOT camera around midnight. You can see if you look closely there, there is an overturned car near the Briley Parkway split. Crews closed several lanes as they worked to clear the wreckage. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt. No word yet, though, on what caused the driver to lose control. And developing news now, a 16-year-old is waking up in jail, accused of murdering another teen. Kavanta Williams was arrested last night. Police believe he shot and killed Ricky Hambrick, a 16-year-old student at White Creek High School. Ricky's body was found in a Bordeaux driveway last Tuesday. His mother tells us Ricky was supposed to be sleeping over at a friend's house the night before. No word yet on a possible motive for the shooting. Three juveniles are facing charges for lying to police about a shooting in Mount Juliet. Wilson County deputies say the group was playing with a weapon when it went off, hitting a 16-year-old in the neck. Fortunately, the boys expected to be okay. Originally, the teens told officers they were victims of a drive-by shooting and tried to hide the gun. New this morning, a man is lucky to be alive after a fire destroys his home. The Kentucky New Era reports it happened in Todd County at a home on US 68. A passerby noticed smoke coming from the home yesterday afternoon and started yelling for anyone inside to get out. The homeowner woke up after hearing that shouting and managed to make it out before the house went up in flames. We still don't know exactly what sparked that blaze. A FedEx driver recovering this morning after a train slammed into his truck. This is the wreckage. Investigators tell us the truck was crossing Wilson Pike at Clovercroft Road when the train hit it. A witness immediately ran over and helped Stephen McMaster III get out. Shockingly, the 34-year-old was not seriously hurt. THP officials tell us McMaster will face charges. But thankfully, no one on the train was hurt either. A 15-year-old has died after being involved in a crash at her high school. It happened on the grounds of West Creek High Wednesday afternoon. We're told the teen passed away yesterday. Police tell us only one vehicle was involved in this crash, and we're working to learn if anyone else was involved. Family and friends are remembering a TDOT worker who lost his life helping a stranger. J.R. Rogers passed away Wednesday night after he was hit by a car while helping change a flat tire on Christmas Eve. He was the third TDOT worker killed on the job this year. J.R. graduated from Cheatham County High School and volunteered as a football coach. His family and friends want his death to serve as a reminder for drivers to move over for emergency vehicles. I hope we can raise enough awareness that people realize that they need to get over and uh, it's not worth the extra two seconds that you would save for not slowing down for someone to lose a life. We not just lost a life, we lost a father, we lost a friend, we lost a good person in general all because people didn't slow down. An unlicensed driver hit JR on the side of the I-40, faces several charges. If you want to donate money to help his family, you can go to newschannel5.com to find more information. A Nashville man is back in court today to face a judge on arson charges. John Bond was involved in a standoff with police earlier this month on King's Lane after allegedly threatening his mother. Investigators say Bond climbed onto the roof after officers entered the home and then set it on fire. Officers use non-lethal bullets to get Bond into custody. He faces an aggravated assault charge in addition to arson. Murfreesboro police are investigating a major animal cruelty case that all started with a domestic dispute. Charles Cannon, pictured there, was originally arrested in October for domestic charges. Now the Rutherford County Pet Adoption and Welfare Services Office has pinned another 25 charges of animal cruelty against Cannon. Cannon will appear in court January the 4th. Happening today, thousands of football fans are going to be in downtown for the Music City Bowl. It is an exciting time. News Channel 5, Dan Kennedy's there. It's uh, there's not a lot happening right now, but this is a big morning. There's lots of stuff going on all day today. Oh, yeah, it all really starts about 9 o'clock this morning, Amy, when people can come down here and get some food, get some drinks, and check it out. They're already started cooking 
breakfast tacos. That's what's on the menu this morning. And of course, they're going to have lunch food, the dinner food. It's an all day ordeal. And it actually started yesterday. We were down here yesterday talking with some Tennessee fans, uh, with some Nebraska fans. Of course, the Vols taking on the Cornhuskers today at 2.30. A lot of Nebraska fans telling us it's their first time the Music City. Uh, many Tennessee fans have been here before, not too far of a travel for many of them. This, uh, this uh, event, the Music City Bowl, brings in an estimated $20 million for the city. That's what it did back in 2014. They're expecting it'll be big this year as well. 20,000 plus people uh, staying in hotels, many, many more visiting just for the game. Again, it is a 2.30 game at the festivities kickoff here, even a little earlier, nine o'clock, come on down, get your food. And then about 11.30, the Vols pep rally takes place over on First and Broadway. That's also where the stage is set up. Uh, low cash giving a free show a little later tonight, seven o'clock, that's post game. Montgomery Gentry played there last night, so it is a day full of fun down here on Broadway. And then, of course, you got New Year's as well. So happening weekend down here in downtown. Reporting live this morning on Broadway, Dan Kennedy, News Channel 5. Dan, thank you so much. 2016 is almost over, which means thousands of people are getting ready to celebrate the new year right here in Music City. Preps are underway for the Jack Daniels Music City Midnight already. They've been going on for a couple of weeks now. Here are a few things you should know. This year's celebration is at Bicentennial Mall State Park. Set to open at 4 p.m. tomorrow. It's going to close after the music note drops at 1235. There will be several food and drink vendors set up inside, and you are not allowed to bring any blankets or lawn chairs with you. And Keith Urban, of course, is the headliner this year, and there are some transportation options so you don't have to drive. To find out more about that, we have it all on Nashville's New Year's Eve. That's coming up in our next half hour.